So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a pattern just like what you see on my screen. And there's one example on the left here. There's another example that has a more bold stroke. And then the example on the right looks almost like a totally different pattern, but it's the exact same as just colored differently. So the basic steps we'll go over, we'll cover all three of these potential use cases. And this is actually super fast to make. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is just to go over to your toolbar and in the toolbar, there's a rectangle tool, which should be the shape by default. It's right under the type tool. So click on that. And if for some reason you don't see a rectangle there, just click and hold and then select the rectangle tool from the top. Alternatively, you can hit M on your keyboard to just select it with a shortcut. And from that, what we wanna do is to draw a rectangle. So just click and hold with your mouse and draw. And then while you're doing that, hold shift, which will make it a perfect square as opposed to a rectangle. And when you're done, you can let go. And also you can change the color of the rectangle at this time for whatever you want your shape colors to be. So I'm just going to adjust the stroke, which is the box that has the portion missing out of the middle. I'm gonna double click that and make it a darker black color as opposed to white, just so this will be easier to see. And I'm also going to rescale this by using the black arrow or selection tool, and then just holding shift as I do that. So this can be a bit bigger as we go along. So in order to make the sort of leaf shape that these individual portions have, there's a way of very quickly doing that. So all you have to do is select that square using the selection tool or the black arrow. And then you can see in each one of the four corners, I'm gonna move the stroke just a little bit lighter so we can see this. There's a little circle that if you were to click, hold and drag that circle, it'll round all four corners of the square. So that's super useful if you want to do all four at the same time. But in this case, we just wanna do the upper right-hand corner and the lower left-hand corner. So instead of clicking and dragging, what you're gonna to wanna to do is click one time on the top circle, which will select it, and then hold shift, and then click once on the lower one, which will select both of these corners. And you can let go of shift after you do that. And then you would just click, hold, and drag like you normally would in order to bring these corners in. So as you can see, that was a really easy way to quickly round those two corners without rounding either the other two edges. So this is the basic building block of the pattern we're going to make. And then next up, just using that selection tool or the black arrow, I'm gonna click on the outside path of this. And also you're gonna want smart guides on. It just makes it easier for this step. And to turn on smart guides, you can go to view and then smart guides about two thirds of the way down. If there's a checkbox next to it, you're good to go. If not, just click that. And then with this edge selected, and when you have smart guides on, it will say path. So it should be pretty easy to know that you're appropriately clicking over the edge. Just hold alt on a PC or option on a Mac, and then click, hold, and drag it off to the right while holding shift. And do that until you get to the other edge, the right side edge of the initial object. And you'll see the smart guide say intersect, which means these two edges are perfectly overlapping. And then you can actually just let go. And when you hold alt or option on your keyboard and move an object, it duplicates that object. So that's the movement that we just did. And then I'm also going to just go over to one of the corners. It can be either the edge corner, top corner, doesn't really matter until I see the cursor change into what looks like an arc with an arrow pointing down or whatever direction on both sides. And I'm just gonna rotate this around and I'm gonna hold shift as I do that. And I'm just gonna do that a full 90 degree angle. So in this case, we have what looks almost like a, the top of a tulip flower. And this is the top portion of the pattern we're making. And then to duplicate this down, I'm just gonna highlight over this entire thing once again, holding Alt or Option on a Mac. I'm gonna drag this down while also holding Shift and do that again until we once again see it intersecting with the lines on top. Then I'm gonna let go. And once again, go to the Rotate and hold Shift and just rotate this around so we have what almost looks like a full flower pattern now. I'm just gonna zoom out a tiny bit so we can see what we're doing on the next step. So just to pattern this out, and this is the point when you can decide how long you want this pattern to be and how high you want this pattern to be. So once again, using that selection tool or the black arrow, just highlight over the entire shape, go over to the left side edge and highlight it until it says path, and then hold down Alt or Option on a Mac, click, hold, and drag it over until you see it intersecting on that right-hand side, and then you can let go. And then while this shape is still selected, and if you happen to click off, all you have to do is click on it again, just hit Control D on a PC or Command D on a Mac, and it will duplicate that pattern for you. So for every time you hit that, it'll duplicate this one more time. So in this case, I'll have one, two, three, four, five of these going horizontally. 
And then I'm just going to duplicate that exact same step moving upward. So highlight over this entire thing using the selection tool, go to the bottom edge and I'll know I'm on there when it says path with my smart guides, holding alt or option, drag it up until it intersects and then let go. And then I'll just hit control D or command D three more times to make this a perfect square pattern. So now we have basically this one on the bottom that I had previously made before. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller to be a bit closer in scale to the example below, although that really doesn't matter all that much. But here you can see how that looks. And if you want to adjust the stroke, it's really easy to do that. Just make sure you have your window and then properties window open, and that's in the top window menu. So window and then properties. And then with that window, when you have all your shapes selected in the appearance section of that window, you can just make the stroke something larger if that's something that you want to do. Totally personal preference about how thick you want that stroke to be. And this particular example to do this sort of background highlight in that yellow color, all I did is go over to the toolbar, select that rectangle tool, and then I essentially just clicked and dragged around each one of these white kind of starburst looking shapes in the center, which brings a yellow box around the entire thing. And if your box is in the right color, you can just go to the toolbar, go to the fill, which is the solid square, double click that, change it to be whatever color it is you want to be. And then while this is selected, you can just right click, or if you don't have a right mouse button, you can control click and then go to arrange, send it back, in which case we just recreated the pattern that I have below. But I don't want that, or actually I can just duplicate this over to show how to make this other example as well. So I'm gonna select everything and then just duplicate this by holding alt on my PC, or if you're on a Mac, holding option. I'm gonna delete this extra color in the background, which we don't need. So on this one, what I did is right now, this has a very, very strong pattern that almost looks like a tiled floor pattern. And if you want it to look a bit more natural or a bit more random, what I did is I started just adding different colors. So I used three different colors, which you can see obviously in the example below. So I'll just make some of these really fast. I didn't mean to do that by clicking on the shape, hitting I on my keyboard and then I dropping these. And then I just hit V to bring back that selection tool. And then you can very quickly just go around and start changing colors of various things. So no real particular rule in terms of how you pattern this or how, it, how you choose to color this, but just getting some color in there can help break up the visual contrast as a first step. But I also went in here and just selected individual shapes, but to break up the pattern, I just selected individual shapes using the black arrow or selection tool, going to the edges until I see the rotate tool. And then I held shift and just did this basically 90 degrees in whatever direction it is I was going. And I would keep doing that by selecting different shapes in order to make the entire pattern look a lot more random, which kind of breaks up the very strong visual consistency that you have, for example, in this top one. So when you do that enough, you end up with an overall pattern that looks much more random. And it's up to you how random you do or don't want this pattern to look. That's totally personal preference on how you want to style this thing out. But that's essentially what I did for this entire thing. I just go around here, rotate these various shapes around or not, kind of deciding where I wanted to break up particular patterns. So just keep going around doing that as you continue rotating until you get this looking the way that you want. For example, I see there's four of these in a row that are all going the same way. So I'd want to break that up and make it look a bit more random once again. So that's one way of doing it. And basically the only thing I did different on this one on the left, it's the exact same pattern. So I'll just duplicate this entire thing over. But then I went over to my toolbar and in the stroke, I just double clicked on that and changed that to a pure white. So when I change that to a pure white, it has a much more light visual impact than the very heavy one of this example over here. So that's one way of doing it. And if you have a different colored background than white and you don't want the edge to look white, you can of course just change that to match whatever your background color is. So that's really it for this tutorial as far as making these patterns. It's pretty quick and easy to go in here and start making stuff. And then the slightly more time consuming part is just getting a color pattern that you like and then individually rotating all these individual almost leaf shapes until you feel that they're broken up enough that the pattern is a bit more difficult to spot and it feels a bit more natural and organic. But if you found this video helpful, feel free to let me know by hitting the thumbs up button to like the video and let me know that this was helpful to you. And also, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. I'll do my best to keep on creating new content just like this in the future. But that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching.